Hello, dear friends. It's Bella back in Miami, and I'm so, so excited to share some of my uh, insights after long extended travels. Something that really came up for me a lot is um, the need to be authentically myself. And this is what I wanted to share, especially with women, how often we, in trying to be accepted or trying to be seen as this beautiful image of what we think would be uh, considered more attractive or more uh, lovable or whatever it is, or in uh, leadership positions and as, as a better leader, we try to manipulate and uh, shape certain parts of ourselves to be more accepted. And in doing so, we're diverting our energy, we're splitting up our energy into, uh, you know, it's like sp divide and conquer, right? When we are not acting from a place of unity as an individual, you know, you, when, you, when you are all one accepting your uh, crazy curly hair, your whatever blemishes uh, and wrinkles that are coming up and the squeaky voice that you might have, whatever it is that you think is unacceptable in the society or doesn't fit uh, in uh, circles where you're part of, that distracts you from being yourself. And when you distract yourself, you're diverting your energy and you're not using 100% of yourself to get to really fulfilling your purpose in life, really uh, making that project uh, you know, come into fruition or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish or in relationships, really, really, truly, truly being yourself. It's normal, you know, in a, in a society, in relationships, uh, in uh, workspaces, it's absolutely normal to have certain masks and to act in a certain way. Um, there are cer certain social norms, but the more we attach ourselves to those uh, personas, the less we're being ourselves. And that ends up hurting uh, our relationships. It really takes us astray from the spiritual and personal development that we're so vehemently are seeking, well, some of us. And it also has really negative effects on our mental and physical health. So being authentically yourself fully accepting who you are on all levels, physical, emotional, um, and mental, spiritual, is really a huge, if not the most important part of being healthy, of the personal development journey, and of being happy. Um, no matter how many plastic surgeries and, uh, you know, uh, straightening procedures you do to your hair, I'm speaking to myself, uh, I've, I've done that. I haven't done plastic surgeries, but I have straightened my hair for 10 years and now it's in, like in this in-between state where it's not curly anymore, but it's not straight, but I'm going back because I realized that the more you do that, the story that you're telling yourself, and we know the importance of stories, the story you're telling yourself is that I am not enough. I'm not good enough to be loved the way I am. And despite the fact that you might fix your hair, or you might fix your breasts, and you might, uh, whatever, uh, Botox your, yourself to, do, uh, uh, to take out all the blemishes, inside you haven't done the work to love yourself fully. And that actually becomes harder and harder as you become more and more, quote unquote, perfect. Because you're conditioning yourself to only liking yourself if you look a certain way and you think that others are doing the same. You know, he will only love me if uh, my hair looks a certain way or if I speak in a certain way or if I um, am agreeable or whatever it is. So the greatest statement that you can ever make is to be radically yourself. This is really difficult for some of us. You know, like my, my, my hair story has been a constant, this has been going on uh, since I think I was 18, right? And now I'm 41. And it's constantly denying that nature gave me curly hair and accepting that it looks 
beautiful the way it is. And constantly having to go through all these procedures to be more like adhere to a certain standard that society has told us is considered beautiful. If we take it to the extreme, just, you know, let's, with, a, with a movie Barbie coming out, right? It's like, how far are we going to take this? Are we saying that literally everyone has to look the same way for us to be considered beautiful? Uh, as much as we say that yeah, like unique, being unique is the, the way that uh, you express your unique way of being beautiful, we still spend millions, if not billions of dollars on cosmetics, on plastic surgeries, and on self, you know, improving ourselves in an aesthetic way uh, to look a certain way. Even with women's empowerment, you know, with uh, bridging the gap between men and women, I, I believe that that's part of the story too. Why do you think that men are so much more, uh, you know, have higher wages and, and are, have leadership positions and things like that? Yes, it's structural too, and it's, it has to change at a social level, but guess what? If we as women, constantly set ourselves to the place of like, you know, to be considered this and this, I have to have this kind of hair and that kind of a, uh, approach and I have to look like this and I'm like, in order to be accepted, in order to be seen as a leader, in order to be, then we're kind of behind in a race, right? They're going with everything they have. Their whole energy is directed to getting what they're trying to get. And we are focused on these aesthetic things and then we start the race so we're way behind we need to like, drop all of these uh, layers and layers of impediments and just focus on what it is really that we want what it is really that represents who we are make our voices loud and clear and make our hair wild and messy and guess what that's part of the spiritual journey it's not sitting in a Zen meditation and uh, quieting your mind. I'm sorry. The spiritual journey is about coming back to yourself, to the physical body and embodying who you are fully. That's why I called my company Embody because it's, it's about radically focusing on who you are. And as scary as it is, as vulnerable as it is, showing that face to the world. My invitation to you, especially to ladies, is please look at yourself in the mirror and start accepting who you are. And guess what? If you have wrinkles and uh, extra fat somewhere or your hair is messy and unruly like mine, it's part of who you are. It's okay. I have to keep telling myself that. Trust me, it's not easy when you yourself have created the image of who, who, of who you should look like. And it's really scary to put this image out here and say, this is the real me, not this person. And the more you do that, the more energy you liberate and free up to be truly happy, to be truly who you are, to find your purpose and to find the loving relationships that you're looking for.